The method we saw in the previous module, we called a no correction method for creating the confidence interval. However, there is a problem with this. And the problem is, is that every time we conduct a confidence interval with a significance of 0.05 or a confidence level of 0.95, we increase the probability of error. Because what happens is, is that we're computing the probability of one and then computing the probability of the other. And what happens is we're compounding the error. There's an error rate of 0.05 in the first one. There's an error rate of 0.05 in the second one. In a sense, we have a computed error that's going to be slightly larger because you have error in one, but error in the other. Let's see how this works. In the first confidence interval, we have a 0.95 confidence level. In the second one, we have another 0.95. Individually, they're 0.95 confidence intervals. But remember, we're dealing with confidence intervals simultaneously. So if we had a third one, we have another 0.95. And according to probability, we're gonna multiply these together because you have the 0.95 in the first one, 0.95 in the second one, and a 0.95 probability in the third one. When you multiply these together, you get 0.857. So therefore, with more confidence intervals, when you multiply the confidence levels of each, you actually reduce your overall confidence, in this case, to 0.857, which means we can be 85% certain of our solution, which means we've computed our simultaneous confidence intervals at only 85% or 0.85 probability. So how do we adjust for this? Again, we're gonna focus on that M, and we call these things the family-wise confidence intervals because all that's really gonna change is that correction factor M. There are three methods that we will use. Tukey HSD, honestly significant difference, Bonferroni correction, and the Chaffee method. Each one will have a different size confidence interval. The Tukey HSD was developed by John Tukey, and it's going to correct the confidence interval from the t-test comparisons. Now this is a little bit more involved than the other two, but it's the most commonly used one. What we're going to do is we're going to obtain what's called a Q value. This Q value is derived from the studentized range Q table. In R, we can use the Q2 key function. In Excel, we'll be required to use a lookup table. So, three things are gonna be needed. The degrees of freedom within the groups, the total number of groups, and the number of observations within a group. So from our previous example, we have three groups, and we'll have 27 degrees of freedom. Here's the table for the two key Q values. Remember that we have 27 degrees of freedom within the group, and we'll have the number of groups as being three. So therefore, we're gonna look at 27 and three on the table. When we do this, we will find that the value that we're looking for is 3.5064. That's our Q value. So now what we'll do is we're gonna slightly modify the formula because our M will be Q divided by the square root of two. So when we compute this and we put in the Q value over the square root of two, we will have our new number here as 2.48. So therefore it computes a new lower bound and a new upper bound. The new lower bound for that first pair of no sound and jazz sound is negative 0.497 to negative 0.43. So you'll notice that it is a slightly wider confidence interval. And the same holds true for the others. However, our conclusion is still the same, that the first and the third have significant differences, but the second does not. Now, another way of using two key HSD is to compute the HSD value or the overall significant difference. And this is gonna give you the same result, but slightly easier calculation. We'll take Q times the square root of the MSW, mean square within the groups, and divide by the number of samples in the group. And again, we're assuming that the samples will be the same size in this case. When we compute this, we'll get 2.27. And what we're saying is that if you look at the difference column here, and you take the absolute value of that column, anything that is greater than this HSD number would be statistically significant. So negative 
taking the absolute value will be greater than 2.27. And you can see that we get the same result as we had before. The next correction method is the Bonferroni method. And it's a bit more conservative than the Tukey method, but it's very easy to implement. The Bonferroni correction finds a value for alpha that would correct the, for the error based again on the t-test. So to compute the significance level, we will divide the significance level by the number of groups. Therefore, we will compute this alpha star, which is alpha divided by two. Again, our original alpha is 0.05. So we're gonna divide that by two because we're doing a two-tail test. We will divide by the number of groups. So we can do a little bit of the math here, and we will end up with alpha divided by two times one over g, which is equal to alpha over two g, which is 0.05 divided by two times three, which is six giving us a 0.0083 for the new alpha. So our confidence level, remember before at 0.05, we would do one minus 0.05 divided by two, which gave us 0.975. Here, we're gonna just use the alpha star because we've already done the alpha divided by two. And we end up with one minus 0.0083 to the power of the number of groups. So if we have two, three groups, this will be to the power of three, which will give us a new value of 0.9916. Remember before that we multiplied each confidence level for each of the pairwise comparisons. Remember it was 0.95 times 0.95 times 0.95. So we're gonna do that here, but with our new level of 0.9916, which is the one minus 0.0083 in this formula here. When we multiply each one of them together, we end up with a number that's 0.9752. which is our 95% family-wise confidence interval. It's 0.975, which is similar to the way we did our alpha divided by two from the original t-test. Using this, we can plug this new value for t into that equation. We use t.inv, one minus alpha star, with the 27 degrees of freedom, and we compute a new t statistic of 2.552. We plug that into the formula, and we can obtain the following tables. You'll see down below where that M Bonferroni is 2.552, whereas originally with no correction, it was 2.10. Again, we look at the confidence intervals and we have negative 0.503 and negative 0.37. It still does not span zero, so therefore it is significant. The same holds true for the third group comparison. And so therefore, our conclusion remains the same as it originally had, the only difference is the confidence intervals for Bonferroni are a little bit wider. The final method is the Chaffe method, and it does more than just pairwise comparisons, but we're gonna just use it for this right now. In this case, it requires an F value. Again, we're gonna compute a different F statistic using the f.in function in Excel, and you can do this in R by using the qf function. It's the most conservative of the three correction methods and provides the widest confidence interval. When we say conservative, we mean we really want to be sure that there's a difference between the groups. And in, other, in order to do that, we need to make sure it has the widest confidence interval to make sure that we have the best chance of spanning zero to ensure that there is a difference. In other words, if it's really wide and it still doesn't span zero, then you can be very sure that that comparison is not the same you can be very sure that the two groups are different. So for the Chaffe method, M is defined as this formula here. The square root of G minus one times the F statistic with significance level, as well as the two sets of the degrees of freedom, computed as G minus one and minus G. So in our example, this new computation will be 2.59. When we plug this back into our table, you'll see that there's our M Chaffe, which is 2.59. Originally in no correction, it was 2.10, so that you can see it's quite larger. Looking at our lower bound and upper bound, we have negative 0.507 and negative 0.33. Again, it still does not span zero, and this is true for the first and the third group. Therefore, our conclusion continues to be the same, but this is the widest confidence interval that's provided. Looking at all the comparisons together, the no correction, the Tukey, the Bonferroni, and the Chaffe, you can see the relationship between the confidence intervals. The confidence intervals have become progressively wider, so therefore the Chaffe is the most conservative. 
the two key is the most widely used. Now, it should be noted that in another module, we'll go a little bit deeper into how to use Chaffee a little bit differently for different types of contrast because it's truly a powerful method. So two key is the least conservative of the correction methods, but is the most widely used, while Chaffee is the most conservative correction. That is, it provides the widest confidence interval. Further, all of these corrections assume that the sample group sizes are identical in terms of the number of observations in the group are the same or very close. Using these methods usually depends on whether the contrasts, that is the comparisons of the groups, are planned or unplanned. A planned contrast is one in which the comparisons are known before the experiment is studied. In other words, we know exactly what we're going to compare before we do anything. We know we're comparing class one to class two, class three to class four, class one to class three, and so forth. And unplanned contrasts are comparisons that are done after the data is collected. And the, analysis, and the analysts want to examine all pairwise groups. And this is one of the reasons why the Tukey method is so popular. The Chaffee method can be used for both planned and unplanned groups. However, it can be used for comparisons between one group and the average of the remaining groups. And so therefore, for the most part, you can use the Tukey method and be generally safe in terms of the conclusion and outcomes.